Hey everyone, I'm here today with my June book haul. I bought 10 books this month and because of the 30 day book challenge I've been reading a lot so I also read 10 books. Guys, that means I broke even. I actually broke even for once. This is the first month in a very long time where I'm leaving the month with the exact same number of to read currently owned books as I started the month with. Thank you, thank you. So even though I've read loads of books and I'm breaking even for the month, I do still have 10 books to show you, so I'm just going to jump right in. I bought my books from three different places this month. I went to the Booktopia website, I also used the Basement Books website, and then I bought a couple from my own work as well. So even though I did buy 10 books, I think 8 of them I got for heavily discounted off the recommended retail price. So I really... it looks daunting, but I didn't spend that much. The first book that I bought this month is the third book in a trilogy. It's Requiem by Lauren Oliver. I read Delirium and Pandemonium within about two days of each other and then spent so long trying to find somewhere where I could get this book where it wouldn't be A, hideously expensive, or B, wouldn't take three weeks to ship to me. In the end, Booktopia could ship this to me in about five days and it wasn't too expensive. I got this one just a couple of days before I had that horrible end of semester with loads of assignments due, so I couldn't really just sit down and finish it in a day or two like I would like to. It's a pretty chunky book and I had to read it over about two weeks, reading little bits at a time, but in the end, I mean, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't hate the end like most people seemed to, I had more problems with the actual beginning of the book and the overall story arc. I do think that's kind of a special skill that I was able to get three books in a series and not have any of them match each other properly in design. Well done, May. The next book that I bought is a biography in a fairly niche interest area, which so many of my books seem to be. It's Father Bob the Larrikin Priest by Sue Williams. It's kind of hard to explain who Father Bob is if you're not that familiar with him, so it's probably going to sound really bizarre. But basically he's a Catholic priest from Melbourne who became pretty well known for doing things in a relatively unorthodox way. Um, and now he hosts one of my favourite podcasts. Yeah, it does sound weird. He's basically just really passionate about community work and has done a lot of really amazing work with the homeless. And then the podcast that he co-hosts is one of my absolute favourites. It's called Sunday Night Saffron, and they basically just talk about politics and culture and religion, and they have a whole bunch of really fascinating guests on. Um, if you're interested at all in sort of countercultures and subcultures, I will definitely leave a link to that one down below, and you should go check it out, because it's so interesting. Basically, I just love Father Bob, and I'm never going to say no to learning a little bit more about him, and all the proceeds from this book go towards his charity work. The next book that I bought is kind of a dangerous choice for me. It's Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I had to read this in year 12 and absolutely despised it. But I'm also really aware of how studying a book can really make you hate it and how it can become really difficult to separate how you feel about the actual book compared to how you feel about having to study it. Analyzing things to death does have a way of sucking the joy out of reading for you if it's not a book you would have chosen to read yourself, so I think that Frankenstein deserves another go from me. Plus, I really love these Penguin English Library editions. I like the way they have the repetitive pattern on them. Um, and I really love studying anatomy, so having the heart on the front just drew me right in. Even though I can tell it's really going to frustrate me knowing that half of these hearts are backwards. The next book is probably the coolest book that I've bought in a little while. It's The Big Book of Groom, and it is big. I've been looking for something exactly like this for a while, and when I saw it for $4 on Basement Books, I knew I had to have it. It's a collection of Grimm's fairy tales where each of the different stories is illustrated by a different comic artist. I don't know if this is a sort of book you can just sit down and read front to back because it is pretty long. I've just had a flick through and read a couple of the different stories and they're just wonderful. They don't shy away from the gore in the original stories as you can probably tell by this nice blood splatter on the cover and they're just it's a really interesting way of looking at those really well-known stories. From a huge book to a tiny book, I also bought Sign of Four by Arthur Conan Doyle. I had already read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which is a collection of short stories, but I'd never read any of the books, so I thought this one might be a good one to start with because it is really, really short. I actually already read this one because it came on the first day of the 30 day read, so I read it as my second book, and I really enjoyed it. And if you ignore the spot right here where the sticker peeled off the shine on the cover, I think it's a really cute addition. Related to the Sign of Four, although I bought them together totally by accident, is the Sherlock Holmes handbook. I think this is sort of just a catch-all trivia book with information about the stories, Sherlock methods, and then the real Victorian era. So I thought this looked pretty cute, but then I saw that it was written by Ransom Riggs, which you totally can't say. Ransom Riggs, as I'm sure most of you know, is the author of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, and while I didn't love the way the plot was handled in Miss Peregrine, I really loved his writing style, and I really liked the relationship Ransom Riggs seems to have with the past, so I'm really keen to see how he handles the Victorian era. The next book that I bought is one of those I really want to read it and I want to own it books, but I'm probably not going to be reading it anytime soon. It's The Brew of the System by David Foster Wallace. I also own The Pale King, and I know that David Foster Wallace is meant to be quite a complex writer, so I don't think I'm ready for these books yet. 
but when I'm ready for them, they'll be on my shelves waiting for me. Plus, this is one of the Penguin Ink editions where the cover art is designed by a tattoo artist, and I think they're just absolutely beautiful. This edition also has deckled edges, and it even has the flaps on the soft cover with this pretty cool design on that one as well. Um, so when I found it for $7 at work, I really couldn't say no. The ninth book that I bought is a non-fiction title, Under the Banner of Heaven by John Krakauer. It's a non-fiction book, like I said, and it's about the murders committed by Dan and Ron Lafferty in 1984. Um, they were part of a fundamentalist Mormon church and they believed they were commanded to kill by God. So yeah, really cheery stuff, but I'm pretty interested in religious fundamentalism as well as the LDS church in general, so this is one of those books where I feel like it was made just for me. John Krakauer is also the author of Into the Wild, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. I started reading this one about a year ago and I got sort of like halfway through and just got stuck on it but I really like the way that he writes and he tackles this really, really interesting subject matter. So I'm really keen to read more by him. The last two books that I bought this month, I'm not gonna lie, I bought them almost entirely based on the covers, but just withhold your judgment until you see how pretty they are. The first one is The Ask by Sam Lipside. I love typography based covers and I love watercolor even more, which is why I love my John Green posters so much. Um, so I feel like this cover was just made for me. This is only a couple of dollars and I think it's just absolutely lovely. This is adult fiction and I think that it's about someone who's trying to secure a donation for his business, but he has to get that donation from one of his old college classmates. That is basically all I know about it, but it does have this really nice recommendation from Jeffrey Eugenides down the bottom here, so how bad can it be? And the last book that I bought this month, My Name is Memory by Anne Brashears. My Name is Memory is a romance about Lucy and Daniel. Lucy and Daniel have fallen in love in every single one of their past lives, only to be broken apart at the very last minute. In this life, they aim to figure out what stands in the way of their love so they can have a happy ending. Although this is way more romance based than fantasy and is actually just listed as fiction on the back, not fantasy, um, to me it sounds really similar to the Fallen series by Lauren Kate. Like, they sound creepily similar. So the main characters in the Fallen series, I think from Wikipedia, I haven't read them, are Luce and Daniel. The main characters in this one, Lucy and Daniel. What is happening? Why are they so similar? It's kind of creepy. I don't know, maybe in a past life Anne Brushes and Lauren Kate plotted the story together and then had a race in this life to see who could publish it first. Because a full-on series, 2009, this book, 2010. I guess Anne lost. I didn't even realise until I was adding it to Goodreads, which means I didn't read this bit right along the bottom here, that Anne Brash is actually the author of The Sisterhood of the Chuffing Pants. Which I haven't read, but I know lots of people like them as sort of light fiction. So maybe if I enjoy this book, I might go check those ones out as well. So those are the 10 books that I bought in June. I am still blown away that I broke even this month. Like, I'm so proud of myself. We're also now halfway through the 30 day read, which seems really scary because those two weeks have gone super fast. But hopefully tomorrow I'll have a midway update for you. I was going to do weekly ones, but then I figured that I'd rather actually spend my time reading the books. So midway and endpoint will have to do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.